Our second of our tools for anticipatory uh, activities is KWL. <laughs> K, you know, like list group label, it's pretty straightforward in its explanations. K is what do you know? W stands the W for want, what do you want to know? And L, what have you learned? So the purpose for KWL is to provide a structure for activating and building prior knowledge. And in doing so, that creates a purpose for reading or learning and summarizing what was learned. So we have the pre and the post. It allows students and assist students to reflect and evaluate on their learning experience in that post and particularly can help teachers assess what students learned. So really powerful and very simple tool. Um, as mentioned, the we have a couple of just quick examples. What I know, what I want to know, what I learned about, similarly here. And in my modeling, I'm gonna give a couple of other examples, particularly in relationship to what I might need to know not what I want to know, but what I should know. <laughs> but something else that's important to consider is your target population. Because if you're working with um, elementary age kids, sometimes they may have so many questions. What do you want to know? <laughs> you may, you, that may open up a, a tsunami of questions that some may be related and some may not. So that becomes a challenge with them. But the bigger challenge in my mind is with adolescents. What if I told you I don't care? You know, what do you know about cardiovascular endurance? Nothing. What do you wanna know about cardiovascular endurance? Nothing. Why should I care? And so it really is important to create a culture of curiosity and engagement, but, that would need to be clearly established before trying to use this very effectively often with adolescents, because then you're gonna get your um, completion of activity rather than the high order of thinking that this really can, and student ownership that this can really be really powerful for. In this next video, I'm gonna talking about the tool for KWL, and KWL, is a very simple um, introductory tool. What do you know? What do you want to know? And what do you learn? And so especially for you know, working with upper elementary, middle school students, this is a really powerful because then you can harness students' energy, their questions, their curiosity. We know that pre-reading and anticipatory activities are meant to both activate students' background knowledge and to pique their interest. And one way to do that is determine what they know and what kind of questions they have about a topic that is important to them. Now, the challenge is when the topic's not so important, and we're going to talk about that too. My first example comes from a uh, middle school science text on earthquakes. So, want to know, what do you know about earthquakes and volcanoes? So usually we would be doing this as a group so that we would have lots of ideas that we'd be collecting together. But again, I'm going to have to make it up. So in this case, it took from a science text and on volcanoes and earthquakes. And so I wrote down what I knew and what kind of questions I might have. So I know that earthquakes and volcanoes are measured on scales. They are often also associated with typhoons. At least I think I know that. And dealing with plate tectonics in the center of the earth, that California is prone to earthquakes and Hawaiian islands have lots of volcanoes. And then of course the famous one, dealing in Pompeii and lots of archeology span of the you know, coverage from Pompeii. Some questions I might have. Do we experience earthquakes in Illinois? I've heard there are, that just seems strange. How do volcanoes happen? What causes volcanoes to erupt and others to remain dormant? And I thought about writing a question about Mount St. Helens in Washington and it, when is it likely to erupt again soon? So then we would have student, you know, then the final column 
this is what we call a post reading or review column. So the here is anticipatory and here is summative and or review. So then students can review what they've learned. And so in this case, we may be from a class discussion. We may highlight what we've learned after a video, lots of different ways than we highlight what we've learned here. This example of a KW I'm gonna take related to physical education and health. And it's going to be based on, actually the idea is coming from a content specials interview and dealing with vaping. Lots of information, lots of stuff in the news over um, the previous year, calendar year related to vaping. So a really important, significant topic. And because of that case, it might be easier to deal with adolescents dealing for a KWL. Now, especially if I do this in small groups, because one of the things we always want to be wary of is the adolescent mentality with KWLs. So that's what, so I, mean, I changed it just a little bit in this course. What do we know? And maybe what should we know? And then what do we learn? So that we might, so pay attention to the, you know, the different terms in relationship to our concepts. So I have written down that I know that many, in many cases that vaping, vaping products is not regulated, that it contains nicotine, so it's highly addictive. Another way of talking about it is e-cigarettes. And that recent additives that have been used to attract young people has led to serious lung diseases where a lot of young people have died or really close to dying. So, and so in this case, what do we you know, want to know rather think about what should we know. So part of this is thinking about outcomes and that another uh, video will talk about the writing to learn tool called RAF. So I could see then creating a flyer uh, and presentation, a commercial a PSA about the risk of vaping. So now they have a reason to ask some questions. They have an outcome that is tied to this. So instead of what do we want to know is what should we know or what do we need to know to be able to accomplish this task? So one of the questions is how does it work? How does vaping work? What are the risks? Is vaping any safer than other tobacco-based products? And why the recent deaths? Vaping has been around for a while, so why all of a sudden? So then I, I have included a couple of different articles um, Then I would share the ones from the CDC. And so afterwards they would create a list of things they've learned and that would be then important to then use as a basis for a follow-up assignment. 